Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful week. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a candlestick and an OHLC chart, which is open, high, low, close chart with Plotly. In the first part, I'm going to show you the difference between a candlestick and an OHLC chart. So you can um, create either of them according to your preference. And then in the second part, I'm going to show you how to build this interactive app with Dash that has a range slider on the X axis. It has a drop down that is connected to these two graphs. So if you increase the volume of oil, you'll see that the, there are fewer and fewer bars and candles on each chart. And if you decrease, then there are more candles and more bars in each on each chart. Okay, so to get started, what I would recommend is go into my GitHub, um, start if you haven't started, it, fork it if you want to fork it. I uh, provide updates here every week. Go into the dash interactive graphs to download the code. Go into candle underscore underscore OHLC, and then you can look at the oil prices, but you don't really need it. You can download it if you want. Um, but what it is important that you click on this and you download this code. So copy this code right here and then put it inside your uh, PyCharm or VS, uh, VS Code so you have it inside a Python file. So this is how it's supposed to look like. Um, and once you have it on your computer, resume this video because it will be a lot easier to follow. Okay, so. We're going to cover these two topics in the Plotly documentation, the OHLC charts. So this has great examples and the candlestick charts. So I'll put these, these um, links under the video as well as my GitHub so it's easier for you to access. But these are really good examples on Plotly, so I highly recommend you, you look at them as well. All right, so let's get started. What's the difference between a candlestick and an OHLC chart? There is not much of a difference when we talk about um, high and low. If we zoom in a little bit, let's go to February 23rd. Let's zoom in right here. Now let's zoom in right here. Okay, so now we're looking at the same data on a candlestick and OHLC chart. There is not much of a difference with the long wick or the long bar. They both represent the top part represents the high and the low part represents the low value throughout the day or the low price. It's always going regardless of color, the high is always going to be on top and the low is always going to be on bottom. So you can see here that this uh, high is 130.5 and low is 115.5 and it's exactly the same as this, 130.5 and 115.5. Even if you look at the green one right here, exactly the same. High is 106, low 95 and you'll see this green one right here, high is 106 and low 95. So the, this wick, the candle wick right here is exactly the same. Um, visualization as the, the long bar on an OHLC chart, also called like a bar chart. The main difference is between the open and close, because sometimes the value of oil or the value of anything on the stock market will open at a higher level, or will open at X price, and then it will close at X minus something or X plus something. It will close at a higher value or at a lower value. So this is why you have to look at the colors. This is where the colors come into play. I'm going to add this link under the video so you can understand. This is a candlestick. A bullish candle is a candle that is green. Bullish is always green and it, and it represents uh, uh, a v data visualization or a chart where the open is on the bottom right here and the close is on top because the value went up throughout the day. At 9 o'clock it was at 
100, let's say, and at, at 5 o'clock p.m. when the stock market closed, it was at 150, for example. This is a bullish candle. Same thing with a bullish bar. A bullish bar, you'll see these on the left, you'll always see open, and on the right, you'll always see closed. Left bar, right bar. But when it's green, the open is on the bottom, and the close is on top, because the value went up. When it's red, it's called a bearish candle, or a bearish bar, OHLC chart. So the open is still going to be on the left, but it's going to be on top. And then the close on the bottom, because the value went down. Remember, a bearish red chart, or red bar, is where the value decreased throughout the day. Open on top, close on the bottom. Here you see open on top, close on the bottom. And you can see this in our uh, Plotly graphs that we built. The bearish candle here, it was uh, the open is on top. This is the open part, 111, and it closed at 107 on the bottom. And then the next day, it opened almost at the same rate that it closed, 107.25. It opened here, but this is a, what do you call it again? This is a bullish candle, so it went up from from open of 107 it went up to 10 um, 115 when it closed at the end of the day same thing here but now you're going to look at the left bar and the right bar if it's green the open is on the bottom closes on top if it's red it's a bullish bar um, the open is on the top and the close is on the bottom so that is that is how you can tell the difference it's hard to say when it's zoomed out a lot. It looks very similar. So it's just a preference. If you prefer to look at um, uh, candle chart because you like to see the the wicks and and these these uh, open close boxes, if it's easier for you, then then you should choose that. Some people like these left and right um, bars, it makes it easier for them, so they go with the OHLC charts. Either chart you can create with Plotly. And as you can see, an overall theme is the more green you have, or the more the green is, is longer, right, the boxes are longer, or the bars are longer, then the tendency is that the price or the value went up. If it's more red that is longer, then it's probably, it probably means that the price went down, if you have more red than green. All right, so this is part one, the difference between candlestick and OHLC charts. Part two, let's go into the code and see how we built this, as well as the interactive capability between the dropdown and the graphs. So you can open the code. And inside the code, you'll see here that we import our files. Remember, if you don't have these files installed on your computer, all you have to do is pip install. So for example, here you would do pip in the terminal, you would do pip install dash, like this, pip install dash, and this will help you get, allow you to get all this, and then you pip install dash bootstrap components, and pip install pandas. You don't have to install this. Then we start our app with a bootstrap lumen theme, so it looks kind of white. We import the data from the GitHub where it's located. And then we are going to change the date um, column to a date time type because it's uh, I think it's integers or, or strings. So I'm going to change it to a date time type in pandas. And here is the container. All of this inside this container is what is displayed on the page. So if we open this, you'll see that first we have uh, the title that is going to be in the center of the page. Let's see if we can actually see at the same time both of them. Yeah. So we have the title of the center of the page. And then we have another row here. And this row, let's make it even smaller. This row has um, a column width of four, four units, or four columns across, and it has two things. It has the label of volume of oil, and then it has an input. And this input is what we can change right here, right? This is uh, it's a number type, not text. It has a minimum 80,000, so I can't go under 80,000. Maximum 700,000, so I can't go above 700,000. It's steps of 10,000, so you'll see 80, 90, 100,000. 
and the initial value when I first load the page is 80,000. And then we have two more rows. We have this row right here that represents uh, two column uh, components, one four columns wide and the other one also four columns wide. And these are just the labels, the titles, candlestick and OHLC chart. And then we have uh, the last row, which represents the graphs. And in here, each graph is about six, it's exactly six columns wide, six on the left, six on the right. The height of the graphs is uh, 80. And in here in the layout, the graphs are empty. There is nothing inside the figure. If you first load this page and you block out all this, like you don't see any of this, then uh, you will see nothing on the page. You will see empty graphs. Here in the callback is what creates the graphs. It creates the interactivity between the drop down and the graphs. So let's go into the callback. In the callback, we have one input and one output. Uh, two outputs. The outputs are connected to the return objects. There's two return objects, so there's two outputs. And the input is connected to the callback function argument. This is the argument. It's very important that you remember that the argument of the callback function represents what is assigned to the component property of the input. Remember this, this is very important. The component property of the input is value. This is the input. The component property is value. So this represents what is assigned to the value. So what is assigned to the value? We can see in the layout that oil volume is this ID right here. And the value is the property is this right here. So 80,000 is what is assigned to the value. So this right here represents 80,000. Okay, But it, now it's 80,000. If this goes up to 90,000, then this right here represents 90,000. That's how you create this interactivity. This is a, a value that can change whenever the user changes the drop down. Now, what happens when the user changes the drop down to 80,000 or 90,000? We are filtering our data frame. So the volume column of the data frame, let's see if we can go into the data frame, CSV. You see the volume column right here uh, will be filtered. So only rows where volume is higher than 80,000 will be inside in uh, will be inside this data frame. Everything is is above 80,000. But if we go up to like uh, let's go up to 500,000, then it's only rows with 500,000 or more in the volume column that are there. So these rows are not going to be there because they're under 500,000. This row will be there. So that's why um, there is fewer, uh, less data. The more we go up, the more volume, the less data we have. OK, so here we filter the data. Now we have a filter data frame. And then we build our figures. We're building our candlestick chart, and then we're building our OHLC chart. Again, if you need more examples, go to the link under the video, Candles and OHLC on the Plotly documentation. It's really good documentation. You can learn a lot out of it. So how are we building this? All we have to do is we, we're going to build a um, candlestick first. We have to say, what is the, the X axis? It's going to be the DF uh, date, right? You can see on the X axis is the date right here in the bottom. And then you have to uh, declare what is open, what is high, low, and close. So it's simply the DFF data frame. This is a copy of the filter data frame. If you're changing the data frame inside the callback function, always make a copy of it. So we're going to use this data frame. And for the X, it's the date column. For the uh, open um, parameter, it's the open column uh, because those are the names of the column. Close, low, high, open. So we're just putting them inside here. Close, low, high, open. We're assigning them to the parameters of a candlestick. This is geo. This is a uh, graph objects. It's a way to create graphs in Plotly. And then the text, we're going to add text, is going to be the volume column. So you can see here, if we go to the candlestick, you'll see at the very bottom, 
that you have oops that you have text you see 47 the very last row 475,436 is the volume of oil for that day at least um, on this data on this stock market so this is how we build the candlestick and then we're just reducing the margin this by default is 80 top 80 bottom by making it 30 there's just less space between this and this so it just makes for a, um, a bigger graph and we're doing the same thing here for the OHLC chart uh, with the margins you can I'm not going to do this now but what you can do if you don't want to see the the rain slider if you don't want to see this you can turn it off by putting this in inside of here update layout comma false and this will cre will turn off the the rain slider okay so this now that we have our two graphs a fig candle and a fig ohlc we return them the first one is going to be the candle and the comma and the second one ohlc because it returns to the component property it is assigned to the component property the first one is candlestick and the second one is ohlc why because here it refers to the candle component this graph and this one refers to this graph right so this is going to return right here instead of the dictionary this second one OHLC is actually returned right here OHLC right here which returns right here like that okay so that is how the callback combines the the or connects between the drop down and the graphs that is it for today I really wanted to show you the difference between these two uh, graphs because they are uh, very popular in the financial world. So I hope you learned a lot. Uh, if you liked uh, the content or the video, click on the like button, uh, click on the subscribe so you get notified when I put out new videos. And if you'd like to support me on YouTube or on Patreon, uh, feel free to click on uh, the link uh, right in front of the screen uh, to join me as a member. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Bye-bye.